It is a little after top of the hour. We're going to go ahead and kick this off. Thank you again for joining our hands-on lab with Zeppel. Uh, today's topic will be customer segmentation for market analytics led by Zach Shansky. This is an interactive session. Um, we do ask for the interim if you keep yourself on mute. Um, during the course, Zach will um, open it up for questions and feel free to use the chat box. We'll be monitoring that. And this is March Madness, so it's a great month after this to sign up before the end of the month um, to become a Zeppel customer. And if you have any questions, um, again, feel free to use the chat and Zach will take those live during um, his intermission. Zach, take it away. All right, thanks Adrian. And welcome everyone for, uh, thank you all for joining. Um, as Adrian mentioned, we're gonna be touching on um, customer segmentation problem for, uh, for marketing analysis and marketing analytics. And um, where this uh, webinar or you know, um, overview really, really came from is one of our, our actual customers that we work with had this type of problem. And I think that it's, it's a really common problem um, that we see in, in the, the data science field a lot. Um, so I think it's a, it's a great foundation for us to walk through, um, you know, how to approach these different types of data science problems and what the tools that you can use uh, to your advantage and, and, and um, how Zeppel might fit into that tool stack that you might be using. So let's start off with, with the problem scenario. So what we're going to be walking through today is um, my marketing team has come to me and um, they're running a specific marketing campaign every month. Um, they've been doing this uh, for um, one or two months now and haven't seen great success. So what they're asking the data science group um, at, at, at this company uh, is to see if there's any way that their customer demographics um, or the data that they collect on their customers can be used to find uh, groupings or patterns um, for better targeted ads. And, um, you know, I think in, in this scenario, it's very common to ask this question. And we're going to start off simple and coming up with, with a simple solution and then talk about how you can get even more advanced, um, you know, uh, tackling, tackling this problem. Um, some of the requirements, um, I, I've listed out a few of the requirements here. Um, for you know what the what the marketing and the data science team agreed on um, that all of the data that 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 we're going to be working with today is stored in a data warehouse and it just happens to be Snowflake uh, and S3. Um, so the data sets were getting really really large as well. So the marketing team was having trouble um, just using the standard tools, maybe Excel that they were used to. So that's why um, you know the data science group was brought in. Um, the, an, another, uh, another requirement was that the, um, the environment that the data scientists were using needed to have some crossover or capability for the marketing team to consume, whether that was in a visual report or something the marketing team could use with, um, uh, could, could use on their own without having the knowledge or technical skills to write code. Uh, and then lastly, all of this has to be done in a, in a secure, shareable way. Um, so that the reports that get generated can be scheduled and run um, on a, a weekly or monthly basis for the marketing team to consume. Okay, so those are those are our main requirements. And this scenario is, is something that that came up with one of our customers. I've scrubbed all the data and the names so that um, you know we aren't we aren't giving away any any private information. Um, and, and hopefully this is helpful for you guys, if not in marketing analytics, um, but also uh, in in other use cases. So before I actually jump into Zeppel uh, and the, the user interface and the demo here, I want to touch on um, the three major components that make up our cloud solution. And I'll continue to tie the, these back into the scenario here. And as we jump into the actual notebook and the code that, that we're running on Zeppel, um, I'll show you how we actually accomplish this use case. So just to start off um, with an overview of the Zeppel solution, um, there's a lot of blocks on, on, in this diagram because there's a there's a lot of different capabilities and features um, that 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 we're delivering and that help with solving the the um, the core problem. 
Um, the three things that I want you all to take away from the Zeppel solution are the three blocks in the middle or the three core tenets of Zeppel. So at the bottom, um, enterprise security. So a lot of times in these um, different problems or use cases, you're dealing with multiple teams. Um, in the scenario that I gave you guys um, earlier, we're dealing with marketing team, which might have you know three or four or 10 people on it or more. Um, and then you have your data science group that's trying to enable the business unit, the marketing team to, to most effectively do their job. So there's a few ways that, that we've built out Zeppel to make sure um, that our security capabilities um, you know, effectively support a growing business or multiple teams that to work together. The first thing that we've set up is single sign-on. So you can easily gate access into Zeppel um, your IT and your cloud engineering folks will, will really like that. Um, so they don't have to manage multiple sets of permissions. Um, you can just use your single sign-on as you have it set up. We've also baked in uh, into Zeppel, which I'll show you some policy-based access controls so that if the marketing team wants to use um, the notebook or, um, but, but, but your data science team doesn't want them to be able to actually edit any of the code, you can set them up as read-only type users and share things very granularly that way. Um, and the last thing that, that's really important and one of the requirements for this use case was being able to track the actual usage of um, all of the workloads that, that are used for this, uh, for this use case, because of course, um, there's, I apologize guys, my, there's someone at the door and my dog's barking. Um, for, for, this, for this use case, uh, the data science team may be charging back um, to the marketing, the marketing group for any of the, the cost expenditure that, that happens. So we've built in user tracking um, inside of Zeppel. Um, then, you know, the, the, I, I think of this as the, the bread and butter here of our solution, um, being able to use managed cloud infrastructure um, without having to actually provision all of the access and the, the permissions and um, understanding how to use complex technologies like Kubernetes or Docker. Um, this really is what we're delivering in our, in our solution is, is a way for your data science teams to be fully self-sufficient. Um, so you can focus purely on the data science work. Um, every notebook, and I'll show you what this looks like in Zeppel, but every notebook spins up an individual container. That container has its own resources. It's fully dedicated to the work for that notebook. Um, the nice part about this is that it, it it's, one, it, it scales really well for whatever use case that you're working on, whether it's small or large. Um, and that also lends itself to be very cost effective. So containers um, have a life cycle, they're ephemeral, and you only have to pay for them when they're up and running. Um, and that's a nice differentiate, differentiation between our solution and a lot of the solutions out on the market where you only pay for what you use um, and you only have to run a container when you need to run code and you shut it down when, when you're done. We're also delivering clustered resources for really, really large distributed jobs. Um, and then any libraries that you might need. So the data scientist team um, may have their own libraries. They may be using um, specific packages for bringing different algorithms into their, their notebook or their analysis. That's what we call images, and you can bundle those together, create them once, and use many across all of your notebooks. Okay, so that's more of the infrastructure stuff. It's a little bit less on the visual, but it's but it's very critical for being able to deliver your solution. Um, it's also really important that this managed cloud infrastructure is really simple, so that. Um, your data science teams don't have to rely on, on other teams in the organization like cloud engineering. Um, and if the marketing group needs to actually run a notebook, this is fully managed and they don't have to worry about any of the backend provisioning. And then on top of that, of course, is where 
you're actually going to be interfacing with all of the data, all of the files that your that that your team is working with, um, and really providing a unified experience so that you can share notebooks as reports and dashboards, so that you can run whatever code that that you need to in supported languages like Python, R, and Spark. Um, and then, of course, I'll show you a lot about the different data visualization capabilities, um, how we set up version control so that multiple people can interact with the same notebooks. Um, and track every single change that gets made. Um, one of the requirements was around scheduling jobs. And so instead of actually building out our own scheduler, we have one in Zeppel that's ready to go. Um, and anyone can, can set those, those, things, uh, those notebooks to run on a schedule. Um, and then uh, for the sharing collaboration components, um, we built out a feature called code snippets, which I think is extremely valuable in passing code between multiple notebooks and we can touch on that um, as we get into the demo um, but this is a really easy way to share paragraphs code snippets um, that are re reusable with inside of of zeppel all right um, and then ultimately when we get to the end of the the, the presentation um, we'll talk about you know uh, what was enabled here through collaboration through the different solutions that we are generating um, specifically for the marketing team. In this case, we're gonna be um, looking at all of our customers and trying to find clusters or groupings of them that are most similar for better targeting marketing. Um, and then you know, finally, um, we're gonna deliver this as an, a, a, an actual interactive report for the marketing team to consume. So that was a lot of words. I think at this point, um, just if you had to take one thing away from this, it's we have built in functional security, all of the man, all of the cloud infrastructure, or any infrastructure you might need to use to run code is fully managed and ready to go at one click. And all of this is put together through our unified uh, interface and unified experience. So from then, from there, I think um, I will Definitely, let's jump into an actual demo of Zeppel. I'm going to walk through this use case. If there's any questions, please feel free to drop them into the chat. And um, yeah, I'll address them as we go. All right. OK, so here is the, uh, the, the Zeppel interface. And um, when you get started, you'll probably have some, or you, you'll have an environment that looks like this, but it'll be, it'll have a little bit less going on. So let me just orient you with, with what we have here and what we're providing um, through the interface uh, and, then, and then we'll dive in. So across the top, you see there's a number of recently worked on notebooks. There's myself who's been developing uh, multiple different demos um, and sample code uh, and then uh, one of our support staff, Mitsu, is, is actually working on um, some open flight data as well as doing some testing with S3 data and so forth. So you really start to get a nice overview of what all of the data scientists or analysts are doing um, inside of Zeppel at any given time. Um, the reason I'm able to see some of the recent work from um, my other teammates is these notebooks can be shared, as I mentioned, through um, access controls. And we group those notebooks together and provide access control in a concept called spaces. So think of these as folders where you're able to actually store all of your work, okay? Um, inside of this space here, machine learning experiments, this is where I'm actually working on um, <clears throat> leading the effort, working on the marketing team's use case, where we're trying to group together um, different segments of our customer base. And you can see here that I've got this um, customer segmentation analysis demo that I'm going to um, dive into. And really quickly, um, since I'm not working on this uh, in, in isolation, I'm actually sharing this work that I'm doing with multiple data scientists on my team. So you can see here that we've got um, a, a data science group that has all of these different permissions for read-only access, for um, run, collaboration, and so execute access. Um, 
a lot of my teammates maybe would want to take the work that I've done and actually fork or clone the notebooks. Um, all of that is built in as part of our access control policies. Um, you can see here that maybe data engineering or marketing team might be read only type users. And so you can assign them uh, with just you know, read access only uh, for, uh, yeah, for, for, for the purposes of sharing the work that you're doing. Okay, so let's, yeah, let's go ahead and, and actually dive into this, to this demo here. Okay, and in order to, yeah, in, in order to tackle this use case, um, there's a few key steps that I, that I, that I had to, that I had to prepare. And I imagine that most of the data science work of the notebook work that you guys are doing um, revolve around these key steps. So the first one is making sure that your environment um, has all of the libraries and packages that it needs. So in Zeppel, how do we do that? We take an approach where we um, give the users two options. Either you can load packages through common package management libraries like uh, pip, or if you're using R or Spark, um, you can you, you know load libraries that way using you know Maven repository or what um, the the R methodologies for loading packages. Okay, so you can see here that that this this code would execute whenever the um, whenever the notebook starts up, and I actually have all of the libraries that I need available to me um, built into what we call our images. So this is a concept that's specific to Zeppel, but I think it's really important to talk about um, as you know, you guys are, are testing out the, the, the service and solution. Our um, images are packaging together about 300 different libraries across Python, R, and Spark. Um, and that's important because these things, these these images actually get built one time, and then you're able to share them across any notebook that you have. Um, so maybe if you're working on specific use cases that that need um, different data sources like influx DB or a graph DB, uh, or if you're doing things maybe in computer vision libraries, you might want to load these libraries and package them up into an image, um, and then use those across all of your notebooks. Okay. Um, you know, a consistent theme here is that we want to abstract away a lot of the challenging elements of um, building out the, the data science infrastructure. So image building can be quite timely um, and making sure it, that everybody has the same image on their laptops or their um, share, you know, their, their servers um, can be really challenging, especially if you're working with non-technical users, like in, in the scenario we're talking about. The marketing team that I'm working with definitely doesn't have the capability to load Docker on their machine and make sure that these notebooks can run. So the images, uh, that support really makes it super simple so that anyone can come in here, click run on this notebook and update the data at, you know, as we're going. Um, I think there was a, ch a question in the chat Oh, Adrian, yeah, Adrian just prompting everyone, feel free to, uh, yeah, feel free to drop a question in the chat. Um, and as I'm going, I will stop and, and, and answer those questions. All right, so I've set up my environment, um, all of the libraries that I need in order to, um, you know, work with the data are going to be pretty common data science libraries like pandas, numpy, um, I'm doing some visualizations using matplotlib and seaborn. Um, and then um, I'm going to be using scikit-learn to do my clustering. Okay, um, so all of those, all of those are available as well as any other packages that you might need to load. Now, the next, the next question um, that you probably are going to get to, or that may come up, is where does this code actually run? Like, you know, if I was running this on my local machine, I would have 16 gigabytes of RAM and um, I hope that my data volumes aren't too large for um, the processing that I have on my local machine. Um, in Zeppel, I mentioned these containers and these containers can be scaled up and down um, all the way uh, up to 128 gigabyte of, of memory space for one specific notebook. 
Um, the advantage of this is as you start to get into the cloud uh, resources and your data volumes get really large, um, you're going to go beyond the available memory um, on, your, on your local machine. So this makes a, a super simple way for any, any user or data scientist to be able to scale up the resources behind the scenes um, without having to involve other teams um, to provision larger hardware or, or, or even go you know, beyond your laptop. So all of this is built in and set up and configured where you can easily just scale these container sizes as you go. All right. So that's our environment set up. Um, the next thing that we're going to do is, is start to explore the data and visualize what, what we have for, from the marketing group. Um, when I'm accessing data, you can see that I have a, a table down here. This is what our data looks like. We've got a few important features. Um, one is around gender, age, annual income, and spending score. So this is, in, this is data that our marketing team has collected and they've asked us to look at um, and see if there's any groupings of data points here that may be helpful in marketing uh, to these users, okay? Um, in order to access data, we, we're, we're, we're doing a, a very um, specific approach here, but if, if you have um, data in, in other places than what I'm showing you in this example, then we can definitely connect into it and, and, and I'll show you how. So um, in Zeppel, we have a generic data source connection object. Um, and these objects get attached and created to, these, to, to your notebooks. You can see here that we're calling a function called z.getDataSource. And what that's doing is actually referencing a data source object named Marketing Analytics. And it just happens that my data is in Snowflake um, if we had data in other places um, or other data warehouses, we can connect to those as well. So you can see here, Google BigQuery, SAP uh, HANA, um, Alibaba Mass Compute, My, uh, M, uh, MySQL, uh, and, and so forth. You know, I mentioned there's also some data in S3, which we can access. Um, to give you a flavor of what this looks like, uh, the data source connection objects will take in a few parameters specific to that, that, that data source. Um, the real value of, of why we built these is to make sure that the connectivity is secure. So anyone that comes in to Zeppel and wants to run a notebook, they have to actually have uh, credentials to access that data source that's attached to the notebook. So if I were to share this with Adrian, who's working on the analysis with me, um, he would also have to put in his username and password to access the Snowflake database. Um, a lot of times teams like to have um, single sign-on support for their data source access. So then um, it makes it really easy to, uh, to, to manage all of the connectivity between Zeppel and your underlying data store. And in this case, this is uh, um, specific to Snowflake. Um, Okay, now once we've connected our data source marketing analytics data, um, I'm actually going to write a query to the mall customers um, data uh, database or, or table, I should say. So we're pulling back all of the records from our table and we're going to visualize them using a Zeppel's built-in show function um, where we have all of these different capabilities for creating charts um, and we'll dig into these charts a bit later uh, as we go. I think this is a really nice way to just start visualizing your data and, and exploring it. Um, and and um, keep in mind that we're gonna look at all of these variables across each other and see if we can find any um, commonalities between them. Um, I'm a Python guy, and I don't know about the, the folks on the phone here, if you're Python users or R, Spark or just you know plain SQL users, but we can support inside of this notebook all of those different languages. So keep that in mind as you're as you're um, looking at you know data science solutions. Um, you may have teammates that want to work in different languages. Um, Zeppel supports Python, R, Spark, and SQL, and um, th that often covers you know most ninety nine percent of the analysis that 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 you're going to be doing. 
Okay, so I'm just showing a few examples of how you would actually do that same query in those different uh, uh, languages. Um, I'm going to primarily work in Python here in this example, um, but just know that you can do all of this cap uh, all of this analysis using those other languages. Okay. Great. Um, so the next step is going to be that visualization and exploring component. So um, since the, the use case, we're trying to find any commonalities or um, common groupings between these different features that we have around age and annual income and spending score. Um, just looking at the data here, it, it looks like our um, average age of customer is around 38, 39. Um, the oldest customer we have is 70. And then, you know, we can, we can take this idea um, of, of uh, income and we're going to look at, you know, what is our maximum income uh, as well as maximum spending score for these specific users. So just some basic data exploration. Um, we always want to make sure that we check for our null values. And so we've, we've basically just prepared the data and cleaned it up. Um, the first thing that the marketing team asked us for was a, uh, an overview of the distribution of the data. So we've created a, um, I'll show the editor here. We've created a plot, um, a matplotlib chart, um, or maybe a, I think this is actually a Seaborn's chart of the distribution of all of our main features, okay? So that they can see the skew in, uh, in, in age or like where the majority of their customers are for these different categories. It's also important to know if there's any skew in, um, in gender. Um, so we're, we're gonna plot that as well. And then we're gonna represent um, all of these, uh, we're gonna do, yeah, we're, we're gonna represent all of these different features against each other and see if there's any that might have relationships. So um, while this is just a visual test, we'll get to the actual numerical test in a minute. Um, I, you can see that annual income and spending score, there may be some some uh, groupings of users spending, uh, you know, as well. And then like age and spending score, potentially, a you know, long tail here. Um, so we're going to start to explore and dive further into what those, those different clusters or groupings are, do that programmatically. Okay. Um, all of these charts that I've developed are going to be, are, are, are based off of um, either Plotly, Matplotlib, or Seaborns. Okay. Um, I like to show that, that um, you know, th this is a very familiar way to build charts um, for, for data science teams. But if you want to do, uh, maybe, maybe you're a less experienced user, or you just want to do some quick exploration, we have this built-in show function where you just have to pass in your data frame and you get to show an interactive chart charting options. Um, we've got a number of different chart options here, like a bar chart, scatter line, and so forth. And we also have a charting editor that wraps in Plotly. Um, and what I've done before the call uh, is actually created a three-dimensional graph of the three main variables that we're looking at, age, income, and spending score. And you know, this, this becomes a really nice chart that um, our, our marketing team, while um, that, yeah, that our marketing team was able to use to, to group together these, these three different um, three different axes or features. Um, and something that was, was really nice was being able to actually deliver this, uh, this report as a, um, as, as a single just um, iframe you know, or, or a single link that I was able to provide to the team. So now anytime that my data updates and my notebook runs, um, the team's still able to get access to these interactive charts um, just by you know, locating this, this single URL. Okay. So a nice way to just start expanding the sharing capabilities um, of the, the, the work and the visualizations that you're doing uh, in, inside of Zeppel for maybe the, the teams that you're interacting with. Okay, so once we've, you know, we visually explored the data, um, the next step that, that we took was, can we use the k-means clustering algorithm 
to um, group together all of these different data points across you know multiple um, multiple different uh, features. This chart on the left hand side, I'll show you guys the code so that you know there's no funny business or magic going on here. Um, but this this chart on the left hand side is showing by uh, by the clusters as we increase the the number of cluster clusters, how um, you know uh, what is the benefit of adding more clusters essentially and where you get the, the tail here that evens out is when you start to get that diminishing return. So um, it looks like the, the vast majority of the under the curve is, is before four. Um, so we selected four different clusters to use um, in our clustering algorithm. So we take the k-means cluster and we apply um, four different clusters to that, um, pass in all of our data and iterate over it at least um, you know, 300 times across all of our data. And then from there, we're able to group together these, these different units. Um, and we do that both for spending score and age, okay? So we're looking at, is there a relationship between um, users with a low spending score across, you know, a specific age range and, and, and so forth? And then we, we apply that same logic to the next uh, set of relation, which is, spending score and income. So this one I think is really interesting because we get sort of the um, higher income users that don't spend a lot or have a lower spending score um, with their own cluster. And so taking this back to the marketing team where they're, they're trying to figure out what demographics and types of messages that would that would, that would resonate with these different groups. Um, this chart here actually provided a lot of value, uh, a lot of value to them. Um, and, and ultimately the final result is, is here, is where we um, pass our cluster number back in and put it back into the original data set. And um, the reason why this is super valuable is because if the, teams that you guys are working with maybe have different tools that they like to use like like they have their own bi solutions that they like to use you know zeppel doesn't have to be the center of the universe for all um for all the work that happens in these multidisciplinary projects so what a lot of our teams do is they will actually um take their insights in this case the result of this um which is a you know a specific cluster and they'll actually write that data back into the fundamental uh, or underlying data store, in this case, Snowflake, to um, be reported on by the BI solutions for the other teams. Okay, so that you know, it's 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 a, a really nice way to um, integrate into the the pipeline that that your company might be working with, where Zeppel doesn't have to be the center of the universe, but it is an extremely uh, you know, effective tool to be able to start um, building out um, or, or, or analyzing data sets and share them with other organizations. Okay, so this kind of brings me to the end of that, that the use case that I wanted to share. Um, the next steps that you know, typically or that, that we, we, we saw in this use case, um, the last requirement was around how do we um, schedule this notebook to run? So that anytime our data updates, um, so does our, our cluster metrics and the groupings of users that are being reported out to the marketing group. Um, in Zeppel, we have a built-in scheduler. And let me let me just show you what that looks like really quick. Um, so the, the scheduler uh, will run on whatever set values that, that your user sets up. And remember, this is an isolated job that will take those resource settings that you set up for your image and for your uh, container size and execute this on a, on a set schedule. The nice part about um, setting up these, these schedules, like let's say um, this is our marketing uh, clusters. And if we set this up to run um, maybe monthly, like, like we had discussed, um, maybe we want it to kick off at the end of the month. Um, and then, you know, we can set this up to run 
um, at, at, at noon or, or at midnight. Um, we create this. Uh, all of the scheduled jobs that you set up are going to be able to be monitored here with inside of our, you know, our, our, our scheduler. Um, the nice part about this is you can see the status when things are scheduled to run next and how um, how they actually execute it if they um, you know comp ran to completion or if they you know uh, failed and errored out. Okay, so there's a lot of management as or visibility aspects around um, you know the, the the different resources that you're using here. Okay, so that's keeping our data up to date and keeping all these visualizations up to date. Um, the next thing that I that I uh, want to share with you guys is, um, let's say that, for example, you know, you wanted to do more than just share a single report or a single paragraph as, um, you know, something meaningful uh, with, with the marketing group. We have a, a really nice way to um, turn your notebooks into very um, simple visual reports. Um, we have a, a reporting feature. Uh, and now I've hidden all of my code and aligned all of the visualizations. So when I actually publish this notebook using a public URL, um, I can have a live updating view of the entire story that we just walked through. Okay, The entire story of starting from um, raw data going all the way through our, our data exploration and um, visualizing the different groupings of users that we have um, in bu buying buying our products, and so ultimately, I think you know this is another really nice way to start taking the the data science work that you're doing and and um, share it with with the entire organization or the team that you're working with. Okay. Awesome. So let me let me go ahead and, and just quickly recap and take a pause here. I'll I'll, I'll stay on this screen. Um, we talked about the, the the Zeppel solution and the three core tenets uh, of the solution. The first one being um, the enterprise security support, where we can set up access policies, set up single sign-on, um, and 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 make sure that you know all of the data that you're accessing is is governed um, securely. The, the second was about uh, cloud computing and all the infrastructure needed behind, that runs behind the scenes uh, and making that available and accessible to anybody uh, without having to have in-depth knowledge of complex technologies. So we set those up for this notebook using our settings and um, created you know, a, a, a large resource for to run on a specific set of libraries. And then the last one was just around the, the unified experience and how you take the analysis that you're doing and actually be able to uh, share it with um, the, the different groups of users at, at your company. Um, so let me, let me go ahead and pause there and see if there's any questions, feel free to drop them into the chat. Um, and if not, then, I, then I've got one or two more things that I think will be really valuable to share with you guys um, to talk more about the, the, the uh, monitoring capabilities and the more administrative capabilities of the platform. Okay. Okay, well, if there's no more questions. Um, there's a few things that I <clears throat> would like to touch on here then. Um, so I mentioned that all of the, the um, one of the core requirements was being able to monitor um, user resources and um, how how much, uh, let's see, monitor user activity essentially. So we talked about the, 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 the different containers that get spun up. When you actually click run, um, let, me, let me go ahead and, and do that. I'll actually start up one of these, th this notebook. You'll see that my container is moving from stopped to starting. And once this starts, you'll see that we're going to be tracking the execution uh, runtime. Okay. Um, and then from there, we can track all of our containers that are actually running um, and all of the usage that, that um, happens and break it down by, by individual user. So for the teams that are more um, cost conscious or are 
maybe the um, oftentimes I hear management saying that there's a massive sprawl in um, resource consumption and resource use. Um, be, when, when using Zeppel, we make it really easy to be able to look at all of the resource consumption, do that by user, um, by day. And the nice part about this is that um, when, when, you start, when you start adopting the Zeppel solution, there's only one um, there's only one bill or one central point where these credits get used. So you aren't, um, you know, you aren't spinning up resources in multiple different environments. You don't have to set up any um, backend cloud infrastructure, and all you have to monitor is the resources being consumed here with inside of that the actual platform. Um, so that was the the last, uh, yeah, that was the last requirement that we had for our marketing team is being able to take. Um, the cost model and be able to break it down and even download the, the resource consumptions for, for chargeback um, for that business unit. Okay, so from there, uh, I'm gonna, gonna jump back over into our, our presentation here and actually go ahead and wrap up with you guys. Um, I will stay on until the top of the hour. If there's any questions that come up, I'm more than happy to answer them. Um, I oftentimes work with customers or, or people that are interested in the solution to explore what their specific use cases are. So I share with you one example of something that I worked on with one of our current customers um, that was working with their marketing department. Um, I'd be more than happy to explore specific in-depth use cases with, with your company. Um, and, and, and also don't forget that if you sign up here in March, um, we'll, we'll give you a hundred dollars worth of free credits in Zeppel. So that is, um, yeah, a huge value when, when you're running on top of our, our resources. Um, and then also we'll, we'll send you some, some cool swag, a Zeppel hoodie. Um, and you know, there's, there's no contracts with that. So it's really risk, risk-free, uh, and yeah, you'll, you'll get access to, to resources like myself, um, and, and, and such so that we can help make you guys successful on top of Zeppel. Great. Thank you, Zach, for a great presentation. For everyone on the call today, thank you for giving us the opportunity to demonstrate our value as a data science platform and make your work easy. Um, this is a recorded session, and so we will be sending out a um, recorded session within one business day. Um, Zach's information is in there. You also have LinkedIn invitations for me, as well as email. So if there's any immediate questions that you have today, um, before we get the follow-up email, feel free to ping us. And we will stay open for a few more minutes uh, to take any live questions. Feel free to take yourself off mute or uh, go ahead and drop the um, any questions in the chat. And thank you for um, the nice compliment to Zach. Uh, we really appreciate that. And uh, we'll go ahead and give you time back for your day. Have a great March, everyone. And again, uh, enjoy March Madness. Okay, that's a wrap. We're going to go ahead and end the call. Thank you. Thanks, everyone.